A little bit more on this. Bring in Mercedes Slap, Mercy Slap, CPAC, CPAC Foundation senior fellow and former uh, comms director at the White House or director, I don't know, special comms, whatever she wants to be, she can be. <laughs> and uh, another dear friend, Hogan Gidley, former White House deputy press secretary. Um, Mercy Slap, you heard uh, Andy McCarthy. What'd you take away from it? Look, I think it's going to be very interesting to see if they are going to unredact all the whole thing and instead of uh, just selectively picking things out from the affidavit. Uh, you know, I think that that's the, what the judge is asking for. He's, he's asking the government to come back and say, OK, what are you going to redact and then decide how to proceed? But look, at the end of the day, we know that this case is unprecedented. We know that this case has, of, as the media organizations have even said, and I can't believe I'm agreeing with these liberal media organizations, some of them, saying that there's a lot of public interest around this case, yeah. and we need the transparency, and we need to know what is going on. We've seen when the Democrats have redacted uh, th these types of documents, uh, because what happens is, is that they hide a lot of it, and that, of course, then leads to things like the Russian hoax. Uh, so I think it's important for the American people to clearly see uh, what the uh, Department of Justice uh, put down on paper in the affidavit, and it should be unredacted. Hogan Gidley, um, I don't know. I don't know everything I think about this. It's interesting because it's a very complicated matter. The politics here are complicated. The legal stuff is very complicated. I mean, in a sense, it's not complicated. They should just, they should just unbutton this whole damn thing and show us what they got because I think it's one big fishing expedition to try to tie former President Trump to some kind of January 6th conspiracy. That's just my view. Not everybody agrees with that view. But I think they're looking... I don't think they care one bit about archives or presidential records except insofar as it might somehow link Trump in uh, some indictable way to what happened January 6th. But I will say this, Hogan, and that's where I'm going to ask you is this going to go on for a while? And would the Democrats prefer to have leaks and innuendos and hoaxes and charges rather than face up uh, to inflation and to recession and to uh, gasoline prices and to grocery store prices and to the open and broken borders with two million illegals crossing the borders? In other words, I mean, I think Democrats probably love this stuff because they'd like to do anything but talk about what's really going on in this country. There's no question, because they're the cause of all the problems in this country right now with our families and our future. But you, on the, in the previous segment with Andy and Mercy, hit on a word I think that's very important here, and that's transparency. The left hates it, whether it's teaching critical race theory in our schools, whether it's about transing kids uh, in kindergarten. The left doesn't want you to see behind the curtain. The FBI, the DOJ, the CIA, and all these three-letter agencies in Washington, D.C., went after Donald Trump before before he was president, while he was president, and they're still trying to take him down even though he has left office. The American people see a weaponization of the federal government against a citizen in this country, a former president, and they are terrified because if they can do it to him, they can do it to any of us. Us. The FBI got out over its skis here. They promised they had stone cold evidence in the Russia investigation. They didn't. They're promising the same thing here. If we unredact these things, get them out in the public, everyone will get a chance to see exactly what's happening. The left hates that transparency because they're afraid of what it could expose internally at these agencies. Yeah, well, with even that, the names, I mean, I'm not that interested in names. What I want to know is what exactly Justice Department thinks is probable cause for a criminal right. indictment. You know, that's where I think the rubber meets the road. Mercy Slap, give you the last word. Well, just because you're Mercedes Slap, you always get the last word. Because um, I'm special. You are special. <laughs> Lord knows you're special. Um, I'm going to pivot to you. That was a joke. At Mercedes, will the Republican Party stay behind Trump in the weeks ahead as he goes through this crucible, I'll call it? Well, we know one Republican who will not, and that's Liz Cheney, because she's obviously building an organization <laughs> that will focus on making sure that they stop any Donald Trump campaign. Look, I think the Republican Party, and we saw this uh, even at CPAC Texas with the straw poll, 
the grassroots, they're with Donald Trump, mm. Larry. They just are. It's, it's, it's vastly supporting Donald Trump. And I got to tell you, like, there are a lot of people that even though they were not on the Trump train, I've gotten calls and they've said FBI yep. has gone too far. Mm. The deep state has gone too far. You're starting to see a shift where they're saying, wait a second here. They, these Democrats are going to go after the presidential opponent opponents. That is incredibly problematic. And I do think that you're going to find you know, he still has the heart of the party. Mm. That That is th no doubt. Now, does that change in a year or two? We don't know. But at this point, no, I mean, it's clear that the Republicans are sticking with him. Now, your point is well taken. I mean, look, you look at the support, you know, and the outrage uh, at the break-in. You, you know, Pompeo and Pence. And I bumped into Nikki Haley, um, you know, on 6th Avenue in front of the building. She saw all, all for him. And so, I mean, actually, Liz Cheney's probably the only one who didn't support him. So she's kind of out of well, office. Well, she thinks she's right Abraham now. Lincoln, so that gets a little complicated, Larry. <laughs> yeah, well, I got to tell you, Mercy, I knew Abe Lincoln, and she is no Abe Lincoln. <laughs> that was a joke. We got to get out. Mercedes Schlapp and Hogan Gidley, love you.